And hello everyone, I'm Yong Chang Wang from the University of Melbourne and today's topic is solar driving concurrent CO2 and water production from the, uh, from the air. And the story starts from the climate change. And we, we all know that we are facing climate change and global warming in this century. And uh, as we can see in the right line here, the right line shows, uh, uh, sh shows our emission target in this century. And as we can see, we need to achieve net, net zero greenhouse gas emissions in this century. And for achieving this target, we need to develop some uh, carbon removal technologies which can directly remove carbon dioxide from the air. And by middle century, we should have the ability to remove 10 gigatons uh, CO2 directly from the air per year. And uh, the question is how to achieve that. And now I have a concept, the air to X concept. And in this concept, uh, this concept means cap uh, co directly converting atmospheric CO2 to some chemicals such as methane and methanol. And in this concept, uh, we conduct direct air capture first. Direct air, direct air capture means uh, directly capture CO2 from the air and get CO2 products. And then we can use the CO2 product to uh, generate some uh, uh, some, uh, some our target products such as methane and, and methanol. And of course, for CO2 conversion, we need hydrogen. And for hydrogen production, a, uh, a water electrolysis powered by renewable energy is a promising method. So now we need water. So the problem here is can we get CO2 and water concurrently from the air? And according to my research, the answer is yes. And firstly, we need uh, to develop a material with high affinity to CO2 and water, especially low, CO low concentration CO2 and water. So I prepared a material functionalized with amine groups. And the amine groups can react with CO2 and low concentrations and, and low uh, temperatures. And the material also has some um, uh, hydroxyl groups for water absorption. And when this material contacts with air, the atmospheric CO2 and water uh, would be uh, absorbed or trapped in the material. And if we apply heat to the material or increase the temperature, the CO2 and water would be released. So then I designed a process, a temperature swing process for this material. And this process includes three steps, absorption step, desorption step, and cooling step. And in the absorption step, uh, it means uh, we use a column packed with my material, uh, captured CO2 and water from the air. And in the desorption step, I heat the column and increase the temperature and collect the CO2 and water product. And the two products can be uh, easily separated uh, through a condenser. And in the cooling process, uh, we just use the fresh air to remove, to, move, to remove the heat and reduce the temperature. So obviously we need thermal energy to operate this process. So I was thinking, can we use renewable energy to provide the thermal energy required by this process? Uh, we know that photothermal conversion can be used to uh, convert uh, solar energy to uh, thermal energy. Uh, for example, uh, solar hot water uh, systems has been commercialized for a few decades. And based on that, I designed, a, uh, I, I designed this solar heating column. Uh, and this column in, includes this uh, steel tube, which is a black tube here, and the vacuum glass tube. And this black, black, black tube is coated with solar absorption metals for converting solar energy to thermal energy and for heating the whole system. And the vacuum glass tube here is to reduce the heat loss because it's vacuum. And I tested the uh, energy conversion efficiency of this tube, and it's around 63%. It means 63% of the uh, renewable energy can be harnessed uh, in this, uh, 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 can be harnessed and converted to thermal energy in our uh, solar heating column. And now, uh, based on the material, based on the process, and the solar heating tube, I established this prototype for cap 
uh, for uh, harvesting CO2 and water directly from the air. And, and we can just look at the uh, bottom picture. The bottom picture shows the, shows the experimental facilities used in the desorption process. And it includes a solar heating column packed with my material for CO2 and water capture, and a thermal couple for uh, temperature analysis and computer data aggregation system, and a condenser for separating CO2 and water. And finally, a syringe for gas collection, especially the CO2 gas collection and recording the volume of the CO2 product. Okay, let's move, let's move on to, the, to my experimental results. Uh, and let's start with the CO2 capture performance. And this slide shows uh, CO2 loading of the material and the material temperature and the solar flux in absorption and desorption steps. And uh, the CO2 loading here means the volume of CO2 uh, that we can uh, trap in the material. And in the absorption step, the CO2 loading increases because the material is always, uh, is always capturing CO2 from the air. And we can see that the maximum CO2 loading is around 23, uh, 23 milliliter per gram. It means the material has the ability to uh, extract uh, 23 milliliters uh, per gram. And in the desorption step, uh, with the irradiation of solar energy uh, or sunlight, the temperature increases. And when the temperature uh, reaches 90 degrees C, we can see the CO2 loading starts decreasing. And, and, in, uh, and the CO2 product can be fully uh, released or collected in just one hour uh, based on the uh, solar heating. And now we have, CO2, we have, we have this CO2 product. So if we want to use this CO2 product for further CO2 conversion, uh, we need to focus also on the, uh, on the purity of the CO2 product. So I also analyze uh, the CO2 purity. Uh, so as we can see, uh, for the product, uh, for the first tw uh, tw uh, 200 milliliter product, no CO2 can be uh, detected because it's just it's just the air in the in the in the column, and for the um, product uh, collected after 500 milliliter, a very high CO2 purity uh, could be uh, could, could be obtained. So it means this prototype has the ability to produce high purity CO2 from the air, and I also compared the uh, the uh, distilled water and the water product produced from the air. Uh, as we can see, the water um, product looks clean. And uh, for the productivity of this prototype, um, if, we cons uh, if we assume that all the produced water can be electrolyzed to hydrogen, so we can calculate the hydrogen productivity based on the water productivity. So here, I just present the CO2 productivity and the hydrogen productivity. And the results show that we can get uh, 3.5 liters CO2 and 7 liters hydrogen from, uh, f for uh, just one cycle using this prototype. And the volume ratio of hydrogen to CO2 is around two. And this ratio is good for the production of methane and methanol because the, uh, the reaction product water can be electrolyzed again to hydrogen. Uh, finally, I would like to um, briefly summarize my uh, research works. Uh, in my research works, a solar thermal device was developed to harvest atmospheric CO2 and water directly, and this device was able to produce 3.5 liters CO2 and uh, 6 grams water per cycle uh, from the air. And in the near future, I would like to integrate, um, integrate water electrolysis with my prototype to directly produce hydrogen from the air. And uh, I hope that my, uh, my research would, would be helpful for uh, establishing an artificial carbon cycle. Thanks for your listening, and this is my presentation.